Hey guys, what is up, Pixels here? In today's video, we are going over the Puppeteer class in Evil Dead, the game. Uh, the Puppeteer class is, of course, Elagos from Ash vs. Evil Dead in the first season. Uh, he's a really awesome uh, character in the show, and like when you know the build up to this game and all the announcements and stuff, and I seen Elagos was in the gameplay, I was like, man, this will be like the type of demon that I'll main. Um, I just absolutely loved Elagos from the show. He looks badass, like the character design, everything looks great. Um, Throughout the betas, uh, I think Elagos seemed like the most powerful boss, but you know, his abilities aren't great compared to the other bosses, if that makes sense. So like, if you spawn in as Elagos, I think he's quite powerful to take down, you know, you know, stun locking all the different uh, survivors. <laughs> like the stun locking on this guy is crazy because he electrocutes them and you know, it stuns them. It, he increases their fear levels quite a lot as well. Uh, but anyways, let's just jump into his kit. Uh, like I said, he's he's quite powerful. He, he could be quite annoying to go against. Like every time, like you finished, uh, you know, one of his uh, deadites or one of his like you know basic units. Well, every time you finish one of those, they would explode with electricity. So you had to like dodge back out of the way. Um, so you're gonna be wary of that when you're playing against Elagos. But anyways, let's jump in. So uh, the first thing that it says is the puppeteer demon is a master of possession able to control the minds of both human and evil hosts and enhance their threat to the survivors. So, you know, like I said, he, he does seem to increase their fear levels quite a lot. Like I said, he, he's very based around possession and all that type of stuff. Uh, like I said, he, he's like the kind of, <laughs> I want to say like the type of doctor role, you know, if you're familiar with DVD, he's sort of like the doctor role, like making the, you know, control, like shocking the survivors, making them go insane and that type of thing. But anyways, let's jump in and look at his perks as well as his abilities and and so on. So, um, the first perk, obviously, this is his base, this is his basic power, what he starts off with, um, it's called Puppet Master Power Possess. And units you possess have more health, deal more damage, and their attacks increase fear in their targets. So yeah, uh, I noticed like my fear levels will go up quite a lot when I was playing against this guy. Obviously, it's because of his power. So obviously they deal more damage and their attacks increase fear in their targets as well. That's of course if you do possess them. So, uh, like, you know, <laughs> getting targeted 1v1 off an Elagos, you're going to have a really bad time, especially early game. You're going to have to link up with people if you know if it's an Elagos. Uh, obviously it shows you what demon you're playing against at the start of the game if you do pay attention. When you're loading in, it'll show you what demon you're playing against. Uh, so, you know, if you see an Elagos, it's best to always stay with someone because if you go in 1v1 with this guy, you're probably going to die pretty quick because, like I said, if once he possesses even just a basic unit, you know, they have increased damage, they have increased health, and, they, ha you know, it has a 90-second cooldown for this uh, type of ability to, obviously, the possession. The possession. So it has increased 10% damage and it has a 40% maximum health increase. And like I said, th this guy's uh, obviously skill tree that he has is, you know, I, I had a quick scan through it. It's very, very powerful. Like, you know, increase the range of like, you know, electrocuting the, the survivors and stuff like that. It's absolutely insane. But anyways, we'll, we'll jump into uh, um, his next perk, which is called Puppet Grandmaster 1. Increases the health and damage improvements granted by the Puppet Master ability. And that health and damage is 5%. So it doesn't go up by a whole lot. Um, like I said, this is kind of like his base power, and you know, with each level, it pretty much just goes up a little bit amount. Uh, so obviously, we will move on to level 25. Again, Puppet Grandmaster 2 increase the health and damage improvements granted by the Puppet Master ability by again another five percent. And so once you get this to level 45, and once you get Elagos to level 45, is Puppet Grandmaster 3 increases the health and damage improvements granted by the Puppet Master ability by again another five percent. So you know, you, you're kind of starting off with, you know, I mean, once you get to level 45, that's like a 15% increase on top of health and damage. And with the main ability, it's all, already got, you know, 10% of damage there. So you can, like, with his skill tree, you can really spec around causing more fear to the uh, to the survivors and, you know, in, in buffing his damage and from his range attacks and, you know, so on and so forth. Uh, like I said, I can't really look at his skill trees. I did make videos over the skill tree, but they've changed the skill trees from the first beta to the second beta. So, um, unfortunately, it's gonna it's not going to make any sense to actually show anyone any skill trees that I have. But like I said, you know, like one of the perks I did see was called Shock and Awe. And what that does is it increases the range of his Thunderstruck ability. And obviously, we're going to get into his abilities and stuff now. So, all right. So, Elagos... This is the boss uh, that you do spawn in as once you get. Right, by the way, let me just say this: before you get a level ten, and um, b before you um, play demon, you have to be wary. You can't spawn in as the boss until you get a threat level ten. And the way you gain threat levels is by going, you know, 
setting traps and letting the survivors set off traps, you know, d fucking with the survivors basically. So that's how you gain your threat level. Um, and the more you gain your threat level, the more, like, every time you get a threat level, you get a skill point to spend, you know, buffing up your elite portals, buffing up your possession, buffing up your fear, you know, and, you know, being able to spawn the boss at level 10. So, yeah, that that's kind of how it works when you're playing Demon. But anyways, uh, let's move on to his stats. So his stats is three defense. Uh, I feel like his defense should be a lot higher than that because he goes invisible. And when he goes invisible, you can't, hit, you, you can't be hit, <laughs> you know? Um... But anyways, uh, his damage is four, which is very good, by the way. He hits hard. Um, basically, when I played Elagos, uh, I was playing really bad until we got to the last boss fight. Or like, the, I always say the last boss fight, but you know, the, the, the end fight with the, the dark ones and stuff. So when I got to that fight, uh, I literally just spawned in as the boss. I spawned a bunch of basic units and elite units, and then I spawned in as the boss because I had just so much infernal energy to use. And I wiped the whole team with this guy. Like, <laughs> I was just spamming the light attack over and over again. And I was doing, like, all his different abilities. Like, the dude is absolutely insane with how much, like, speed and damage he does. So his speed is three. And he has four in abilities. Uh, so Elagos cannot be knocked back. However, when his balance bar is fully depleted, he will be stunned. And Elagos is invisible while moving. That one's very key, by the way. Uh, you just see this like bit of electricity flying around and you can't damage him unless he's there physically hitting you which is you know pretty insane um like i said he has actions he has a light attack he has a heavy attack right, so his abilities are teleconnect surge uh, elgos uses a tel tel telekinetic power <laughs> to immobilize nearby survivors uh i think that yeah that's one where he like he goes like that and then there's loads of electric comes out uh you know electricity and and shocks them all basically which is you know it's pretty insane uh, he has cast and stones, Elagos launches rocks at survivors. Again, this is actually a pretty decent range attack. Uh, Psychic Squeeze, Elagos, is Elagos uses telekinesis to immobilize and damage a survivor. This attack cannot be dodged. To break the hold, other survivors must attack Elagos. So he can lock on, uh, you know, like Ash or Pablo or someone. And he can, you know, basically shock them and cause a lot of damage. And that will also put their fear up as well. So... <laughs> I said this guy's got you know decent abilities, but again, I feel like he's more based in the light and you know doing the basic actions. Like when I was playing him, what I did was I used the teleconnect surge quite a lot. So what that was is obviously it was shocking everyone in the nearby radius, and then I would just you know just go in and start spamming light attacks, and then you know when I've got them kind of grouped up a bit, uh, I'd use the cast and stone as well because the cast and stones did quite a lot of damage as well. So I said, as a as the boss, as himself, he's very powerful. Uh, and like I said, he, he's very hard to counter because he can just, you know, once he gets his possession and stuff buffed up, he can take control of you for quite a long time. Um, and again, you know, that's obviously going to be fucking with you. You know, he's going to use all your ammo up and stuff. So yeah, that's kind of what the gist is of playing Elagos. So we're going to um, move on to his demi elagos which is his elite unit so his elite unit is uh has two defense you know these things actually go down pretty easily i did notice um <clears throat> not when they were possessed when they possessed they fucked you up but when when they spawn in they go down pretty easy because like i said they only have two defense they only do two damage and they only have three speed but they have decent abilities i don't know i as an elite unit, I feel like they needed more because I was able to take these down pretty easily. I'm not going to lie, especially when I had like a higher level army of darkness ash. Um, I was able to just wipe these out with like, you know, five chainsaw hits, maybe or something. You know, I was able to do like an execution on them. So uh, I think these maybe need like buffed up a little bit. Um, yeah, they're, they're honestly not that great. All right, so their passive skills is Demi Elagos's cannot be knocked back unless their balance bar is fully depleted. Demi Elagos is resistant to damage from range of weapons. So that's uh, that's why I read that. <laughs> I read somewhere about something with range weapons in Elagos, and I couldn't remember where it was, but I finally found it. So, uh, yeah, you can't use range weapons on these things. But again, like I said, you don't really use range much on this game, but when you do... Um, you know, it's probably not best to use it against this type of character. Uh, and like I said, they only took like five chainsaw hits. You know, they, they weren't hard to take down at all. Obviously, when they get possessed, like, most of the time playing demon, you probably want to possess your elite units. So they're really hard to take down. But when they're not possessed, they're not that hard to take down because, you know, their actions, obviously, they have a light attack and a heavy attack. And you move on to their abilities. And the abilities is Thunderstruck. 
Uh, Demi Elgos marks the ground beneath each survivor. Nearby survivor, sorry. If they don't move, they are hit by a lightning strike. And like I said, that was like uh, one of the, the perks in the skill tree that you could level up. Um, and duplicity. Uh, Demi Elgos's conjure a clone of themselves with identical damage dealing ability, but very low health. So this is what I'm saying. Most of the time, if you spawned one of these solo, you know, they had a bit more health. When they duplicate, they, they they have very low health and they seem to go down quite easily. So like I said, they're not they're not great elite units, but they're they're really good to possess as elite units, you know. Um but last but not least, we're gonna move on to their basic units. So basic units, you know, they go down pretty quickly. They only have one defense and one damage, but they're very fast and you know they're very hard to hit with ranged weapons. So, you know, Elagos is that type of character that you probably just want to just go melee like constantly on this dude. Um, abilities, he has three in abilities and his passive skills, Deadite Berserkers explode when their health runs out. So that's what I was on about. Once they're, you know, dead, they will explode and they'll, you know, basically shock any survivors in the vicinity. What they have to do, like, every time you take one of these out, you have to remember to dodge and get out of the way. Otherwise, you know, he's going to do damage and he'll put your fear levels up as well. So that's kind of like the downside of playing against Elagos again against these. Yeah, they don't have a great defense. They go down really quickly. But at the same time, you've got to be remembering and being fast to dodge out of the way of that. So uh, they basically have, you know, light attack, heavy attack like the rest of them. Uh, the abilities they have is self-destruct. Uh, Deadite Berserkers explode at will, inflicting great damage to anyone nearby. So again, they can activate that ability whenever they want if they're possessed. Uh, head rush, this one's really funny. So, Denite Berserkers sacrifice themselves by throwing their own heads at survivors, causing an explosion. This happened quite a few times. It's not very practical. Uh, I did use it a few times when I was playing as Elagos. I think I only hit, managed to hit two survivors with it. But, you know, it is funny when you hit them because it does do, like, a little bit of damage to them. And, uh, yeah, so it, even if you're not possessing them, they will try and do that head rush thing. And Denite Berserkers, Berserkers can dodge melee attacks like survivors as well. Uh, so yeah, you know, this is basic unit, but like I said with Elagos, the main thing with Elagos is like <laughs> he re He's really there to fuck with the survivors like constantly possessing their shit You know constantly setting down traps Shocking them increasing their fear levels like you constantly have to manage your fear levels with this guy because he's just you know insane There's obviously good counters to Elagos So, you know, you'll have like evil dead one ash that can reduce people's fears uh, with his ability so you know, there, there is different elements on the survivor side. That's a good counter at Elagos as well. You know, if you find yourself playing against too many Elagoses, you know, maybe you want to play Evil Dead 1 Ash or, you know, um, well, yeah, Leader Ash actually has fear resistance as well for the nearby survivors. So, again, you can look into doing something like that. And I think, you know, Cheryl, every time, you know, she has an ability, every time, someone, like, you drink cola, it reduces the fear levels of the survivors as well. So... Like I said, there is ways to counter this guy if you're playing against too many Elagosses, which is, you know, obviously the nice thing to see. But, uh, yeah, I think that's it. I think that's everything that I can go over for Elagos. I think that's probably about right. Uh, like I said, I think um, he's quite powerful to play against. <laughs> He'd be quite a pain in the ass to play against. Uh, but hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Hopefully you enjoyed this breakdown. Like I said, it's very difficult to obviously explain these types of, like... Without gameplay, it's very hard to explain certain significant uh, elements to the game and what powers and abilities they offer. But uh, hopefully you guys found this informative. If you have any questions about the character, leave me a comment down below. And I uh, appreciate you guys with all the support throughout these class breakdowns. We've got one more to do. We're finally at the end. We've got one more to do. And then the game releases on Friday, which is awesome. So the next one we'll be looking at is obviously Evil Ash. Uh, Evil Ash was really fun to play against as well, so I can't wait to discuss all of this guy's abilities we use and, you know, what he brings to the table. So, uh, like I said, so far, without the t with the two class breakdowns, I'd say Elagos is probably the most powerful. Uh, but we're going to move on to Evil Ash next video. But anyways, hit that like button, guys. Hit that sub button if you are new to the channel for more Evil Dead content. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think of Elagos. And I have been Pixels. You're my awesome viewers. I'll catch you guys in the next one.